But let me just go straight across first to Lieutenant General D.S. Huda, who of course uh, is a war hero and someone who was overseeing our first surgical strikes immediately in the aftermath of Uri. He joins us from Chandigarh. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us. Now, General Huda, uh, you know, you've overseen surgical strikes of a more conventional nature where our soldiers went on ground, but now we almost seem to have witnessed aerial surgical strikes, sir, for the first time. Uh, that's right, and um, uh, frankly, if you ask me, you know, it was the it was the need of the hour. Uh, after the first surgical strike, uh, we did see little change in Pakistan's behavior. Uh, you know, they carried on as if it's uh, business as usual. Uh, so I think there was an essential requirement for India to up the ante. Mm. Uh, you know, people say using using air force is an escalation, uh, but I think it was an escalatory ladder that we had to climb if we are serious about telling Pakistan that, you know, this much and no more. Right. And you think that strikes like these, while it involved an escalation, you think that in the end it's worth it because of the kind of signal it sends? Absolutely. You know, it, it's worth it. Um, I mean, how long can India, you know, sort of sit back and, and accept terror strikes happening uh, into, our, into our territory? You know, we pride ourselves uh, as, a, as a growing nation. Uh, you know, we aspire for regional and global uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't be seen as a country, you know, which quietly accepts anything which is coming from, from across uh, Pakistan. Uh, terror attacks are regularly happening. Uh, the border is, is hot. Uh, so therefore, if you, you know, I think, I think it just signals a, a new and confident India uh, that's, you know, willing to take the bull by its horns. Right. And General Huda, this seems to have been uh, quite a remarkable operation because for our jets to go all the way in, carry out a strike in, uh, this is not in POK, this is as we understand it in Khyber Pakhtunwa, so this is in Pakistan proper and come back without a scratch is, is quite a feat. Uh, it's an amazing operation. Um, you know, the India-Pakistan border is considered one of the most uh, heavily guarded borders uh, in the world. Uh, and as far as Pakistan is concerned, it's completely concentrating, uh, you know, on this border. Uh, their air defense networks, their radars, uh, they've got airfields, uh, which are very close to the to the international border and line of control. Uh, so for the Air Force, you know, to go in in such an environment, hmm. uh, carry out carry out an attack, uh, as you said, not only in POK, but across in, in Pakistan, Balakot is, uh, is in Khyber Pakhtunwa. And to be able to return safely, uh, it's it's a classic, uh, amazing, professional operation. I mean, hats off, uh, you know, to the Air Force that planned it uh, and the pilots who executed it. Now, General, as uh, always, Pakistan has uh, come out with a... It's actually been a day of a fairly confusing set of responses from Pakistan, uh, from first denial to anger uh, to then saying that, you know, they're going to now take this up with the international community. But I just want to focus on the first part where, and we've seen this pattern before, Pakistan says that India has completely exaggerated these attacks. Uh, there's been no such terror camp or any sort of infrastructure that has been destroyed. Nobody has been killed. A couple of houses damaged. There's been an injury. How do we, how do we process this? Uh, I think, you know, it's, this is more for their own domestic consumption uh, because they've, you know, kept the army on a on a very high pedestal hmm. uh, and its only uh, sort of role is uh, you know to defend pakistan from the from the indian defense forces uh, nothing new in this we saw this after the 2016 strikes also where they completely denied anything has happened you know they took uh, international reporters uh, all over, all over close to the ib mm -hmm. and this is exactly the same thing uh, that they're doing now that, you know, nothing has happened, uh, everything is all right. They have come in, I mean, since the strike had uh, had been done so deep, uh, I think they couldn't completely deny it. So they've taken the next best option, which is, uh, you know, there has been no damage to us. Right. Now, uh, of course, we've uh, had some uh, visuals, uh, images released from the Indian side of essentially this target as it was hit before the strike. Uh, these are, I, I suspect, historic pictures of this particular jaish e mohammed terrorist camp. We'll just uh, play those visuals on the screen. Uh, but of course, the question at some point 
uh, General, will come up about evidence from our side as well to suggest that these strikes were carried out. Uh, we did manage to inflict the damages that we've claimed. How important does that become as a factor? Uh, Asu, to me, it, it's frankly not very important because, you know, similar, uh, similar questions were also raised uh, after, the, after the surgical strike. I think hmm. uh, what is key here is, you know, one, our intent and resolve. Right. Uh, and secondly, that we will go across, uh, you know, and, and hit targets and we will hit terror camps which are in, which are in Pakistan. Uh, I think to me, you know, whether it's uh, 500 or 200 or 300 casualties is really immaterial. Uh, I think it's a demonstration of Indian resolve, you know, that's, that's going to put whatever pressure on Pakistan uh, and surely not, you know, how many terrorists have got killed. Right. Uh, before I let you go, I do want to ask you, though, that with each of these strikes, with the Uri strike and now with this strike, though, the question always comes is, what have we achieved? Uh, with the Uri strike, it seemed more like it was just a case of settling that score of, of what happened in Uri. Now, and so, but then we had Pulwama, and now we've hit them again. Uh, what, what do you think this is going to lead to, realistically? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, we've learned, or we should have learned our lessons, uh, you know, after Uri, uh, that we did do a, we did do a, a strike, uh, and let me tell you, after the strike, uh, we could see that the Pakistan army was uh, was under tremendous pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for some time, uh, we need to make sure that the pressure is not eased. Uh, and I'm not saying you only have to exercise the military option, you know, the diplomatic option, the, the economic option, the international isolation, uh, and where required a military option. Uh, you know, if certain amount of continuous pressure is, is put on Pakistan, uh, then maybe we can hope to see, uh, you know, some change in behavior. Uh, but if you are, you know, going to celebrate this one strike and say, uh, you know, that's it, uh, then we'll probably have something similar to, to what we saw after Uri. So, uh, I, I'm sure, you know, uh, the government has, uh, has a strategy now uh, hmm. which they're going to follow. Uh, we are seeing, for example, uh, you know, much greater diplomatic pressure, etc., coming on Pakistan than we saw after the Uri strikes. Right. So um, let's see, uh, you know, how it goes from here. Uh, but I'm hoping uh, that there will be a series of sort of actions uh, which will make Pakistan rethink, uh, maybe deter it in some ways. Uh, let's okay, not hope you're... for very, very early solutions. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it's, uh, it's a country which has been practicing this since independence. Sure. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I think some continuous pressure is required. Okay, no, that, those are, as always, very, very sage counsel from you that don't treat this as a one-off, don't make a big deal about it like we did with Uri, but be sustained in your approach. Uh, but then I must ask you very, very, you know, the final question to you that you're saying that we should keep the screws on Pakistan, we should continue to intensify our pressure on Pakistan. But what about Pakistan? Because, you know, already we've seen in this, these past 12 hours, the mood there has, uh, you know, there's now a considerable amount of public pressure on the government there. What do you think they, that they could do? Look, you know, uh, I think there are no easy choices uh, before the Pakistan Prime Minister. Uh, you know, the, he, knows, he knows the state of the country, uh, internally, politically, uh, also, mm. you know, the kind of international uh, condemnation, you know, that he's facing. Uh, also, the fact that uh, any escalation that he wishes to do, Yes. Uh, he's, he's contending with a much stronger conventional military force. Right. Uh, and so therefore, uh, you know, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not saying there can't be a limited action by him to please his own sort of audience or for the Pakistan army to say, look, uh, we've retaliated. Uh, I don't see it sort of, you know, escalating into a full-blown war. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, uh, you know, statements is one thing, uh, you know, putting your money where your mouth is, uh, is different. Uh, I, I don't see any easy choices for, for Imran Khan that he's going to now suddenly escalate and, you know, uh, this thing is going to spiral out of control. Right, okay. No easy choices uh, for Pakistan, but also for India to remain resolute. Thank you very much indeed.